mother, my older brother, and me. And for as long as I can remember, my family has been a healing wound. Seems like we do everything in our power to close the void created when a crack crystallized into a rock and was thrown at a glass house. I was born in 92. Among the shards of our broken home and the casualties of a war on drugs. As a kid, I know better than to step on any cracks when walking down streets in fear. My mother's spine might bend to the point of breaking. If she saw me with so much of a cigarette, she would have beat my ass. I would have got a slash for every childhood memory of hi, my name is so-and-so and I'm an addict. As if the trauma for those stories didn't already echo through the chambers of my heart as if I wasn't humbled and terrified to the point of abstinence. So as a kid, instead of using drugs to escape my fate, I would use my hands to liberate video games from the local Walmart. I was 10 years old, getting high off the thrill of stealing from the rich and giving to myself, the poor kid with the afro, the complexion of a dirty penny. Hi, and welcome to the show. Wow, how about that video? That is... Um... Poet, spoken word artist um, Damian McClendon from last Friday night at Collide at the Cashmere Cricket. Uh, Collide was an event put on by Collide CF, which is a group that started, uh, that was the first event and it started to get together um, within the last few months. Um, Matt Weiss and Molly Hartong got together and decided they wanted, they wanted to see if there was the appetite for an arts group in the falls to kind of maybe coordinate and promote the arts in the area, you know. And so they teamed up with Arts Now, um, Nicole Mullet's organization, and decided that yes, this is a good idea, and they went ahead and they started to plan for Friday's event, um, which I was also a part of. I um, showed six photos at the event. It was the first time I'd showed anything publicly, so it was kind of a cool experience. I actually sold a couple pieces. Um, sold a couple since then, too, to people who were there. Um, so it's been really interesting. I, I, it was a fun experience to be able to talk with people, talk with other um, artists, uh, get some feedback on my work that uh, is more of my landscape type stuff, not the stuff I do as much for my professional day job. So it was, it was a cool experience. I really enjoyed it. Um, I, yes, I said I showed six pieces. Uh, Matt built a really cool thing for me to hang the work on. And I, so I showed six 11 by 14s. And I coupled them. I did a black and white film shot with a color shot, kind of of a similar theme in the two couplets. And then overall, everything kind of had a valley, Cuyahoga Falls feel. So that was cool. There was another artist there, Kevin Smalley. He showed some of his works. Also, like Matt built two pieces. So he had his on one side, I had mine on the other. And then Kevin also paint, painted. Well, he was using ink and brushes. So um, I, I call it painting. I, he might, I don't, I'd have to ask him what he uses for his term, but so that was cool. He, he painted the whole time. You'd make one piece, put it down, make another one. Uh, there was a jazz trio that from Falls Music School, they did the, they provided background music. It was perfect. Um, they jammed, they even chimed in and jammed behind some of the spoken word that went on. Uh, there was uh, four poets. The event was emceed by Aceps, uh, who's great. I've seen him. He, he did the, um, saw him at 500 plates, and then I've also at Pichacucha, however that's pronounced, uh, the second Pichacucha at the Civic. He spoke there and he was awesome, and he was a great host for the evening. Introduced the poet, read some of his own poetry, which was, which was amazing. Had some that was absolutely hilarious. Um, all the poets were great. Some was serious, some was, some was just a little more humorous. It was all over, but. It was, it was great. The vibe in the room was incredible. Um, food by Flurries. Cashmere Cricket has a great beer selection. Um, the mayor was there hanging out. Uh, photographer Shane Wynn showed up, shot some photos, I assume, for the Devil Strip. Uh, Svetla, uh, another photographer, take, took some great photos. Got some cool photos of me in front of my setup, which I appreciated. It's nice to, you know, get a photo of, of me instead of always being the one taking the photos. So that was cool. Yeah, so some of the other poets were Sophie Hamid, uh, Noor Hindi, a um, guy went by Insight. So then also at the end of the night, or well, the end of the night, people got in, in the crowd got to get up and read some poetry. Uh, the night started, they passed out some notepads, Ace and his crew, and they had the theme, they announced Love on the Rocks. So throughout the night, people worked on their idea for Love on the Rocks. and. So a bunch of people in the crowd, I think probably seven or eight, 
wrote poems and at the end got up and it was they were they were really good too and some of the people who probably had never done it before you could tell they they were a little nervous but once they got rolling they were they were great it was I mean, for a first event for an organization, you couldn't ask for anything better. It came off completely professional. Um, I'm sure that helps that, you know, never hurts that Nicole Moltz and involved, but I think uh, Matt and Molly really, I don't know, they, they have their stuff together. So anyways, I want to thank, I want to thank um, Collide and Arts Now for having me there, letting me be involved. It was a great experience. And I think it just seemed, I universally heard from people how how much they enjoyed it and how well and smooth they thought the whole event went off. Another thing um, photographically I had going on last week, I developed a role of Kodak Triax. Triax did that in HC 110 Dilution B. It was a role that I would shot in my um, Nikon L35 AF, this Nikon's first point and shoot uh, autofocus camera. I think it's 1983, it's early 80s. Um, that was fun. I started started that role on St. Patrick's Day. I uh, took a couple shots at Bike Party, um, a few other location shots when I was out and about. It's a fun, simple camera to use, and it actually is has a great exposure meter. meter. It's almost always dead on. It's, it's really impressive, fairly sharp. I made a little time lapse while I was developing the roll of film for fun. Let's put that together. Shot it with my little Rebel. I've been carrying this thing around more and more as I've shot more video and it's nice not to have to carry around the two expensive cameras that I own. I picked this up on as a Black Friday special for only $200. So I, it almost became a why not. It's always nice to have a backup and then in case I want to do a two camera setup for video, which I don't know, might do for this show a couple times as I get farther into it. So also another thing I picked up is last week is this audio recorder, a Zoom 4N. So this is the first time I'm recording the audio separate and without my camera. I, one thing I've really wanted to step up in my video is, is my video production is the quality of the sound. So sync up the audio separate ex with the record externally. So also when I'm doing professional work, I'll be able to monitor the audio. I've had a couple times where I had um, an interview subject tap the mic and then it was rubbing on his shirt the rest of the interview. And even though I was watching the equalizers on the back of the camera, I didn't realize I was getting this awful rubbing noise. And I was able to use Premiere Pro to clean it up as much as possible, but it's still just rather get it right. And especially in those times where it's critical like that, where I'm, you know, I have a client, I have an interview subject, I have deadlines. It's just, I can't afford to mess stuff like that up. So these are down to about $160 now. And seems like it might be overkill for what I am going to do, but it's one thing I've learned in photography and video. You go, you go over and above, you can always grow into the features. It's way better than spending money and then needing just to upgrade again and then ending up with a paperweight. So this, this can record with two built-in stereo mic, mics in a couple modes. They have 120 degree range, 90 degree range. It has XLR inputs. It has this, I'm recording with my lavalier mic and the 3.5 jack. It has multi-track recording up to four tracks, just all kinds of stuff. I'm just starting to scratch the surface. Like I said, this is the first time I'm using it and that's why I'm doing it here. So I could test it out on something like this before the pressure's on. I'll be using it next week too um, for a wedding. So I definitely wanna learn my way around that before um, I get too involved with doing it for professional work. Um, a couple other shoots I did last week, shot for Akron Tool and Die. I'm working on a commercial for them, which should be interesting. It's coming together really nicely. Just need to get a, doing the narration next week and then hopefully I'll be able to show that. Did some product photography out at LTS Scale. Uh, it's a busy week. All week this week, I'll be down at um, the Cascade Commons or Cascade Plaza, downtown Akron. Uh, the Knight Foundation and the Ohio and Erie Canalway Coalition have set up a cabin down there and they're having, they're using it for meetings and the Metro parks have been coming in doing programming. So there's going to be cool stuff going down there for two weeks. Check out, um, I'll link to their schedule on the Facebook page, but I'm going in and out there as I'm covering that for the next two weeks and I'll be shooting some video and I'll share that with you in the next episode. I'll see you then. Thanks for watching.